you hear me? Oh, good. Oh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Okay. All right. It is six o'clock. I'm calling this meeting to order. This is the Village of Royal Palm Beach Education Advisory Board meeting for Monday, February 13th. Welcome, everyone. We have an exciting agenda. Lots of students in the room. Very exciting. I'm going to go ahead and go through the agenda, and then we'll have our presentations. And the first, I believe, is our Pledge of Allegiance. Of Allegiance. Please stand. Okay, great, thank you. And now we have the roll call. Thank you, Chair. Chairwoman Jennifer Sullivan. Here. Vice Chair Megan Crosby. Here. Nancy Panay. Here. Kathleen Greer. Here. Erin Franklin. Here. Paula Wilson. Here. Javier Rivas. Here. And Councilman Jeff Amara. Here. Thank you, Jacqueline. Okay, it's my pleasure to introduce two new board members tonight, Aaron Franklin and Paula Wilson. Uh, Aaron is on our is on the committee, and Paula is an alternate. So I'm going to ask them to say a few words about themselves and introduce you to to uh, this group of people that we get to see every month. So, Aaron, do you want to start? Hi, my name is Aaron Franklin. Um, I have lived here for 14 years in rural Palm Beach. Um, although I was born and raised in Palm Beach County, I have three kids that are also in the Royal Palm Beach schools, and I help kicked off the um, little free libraries around the parks and schools. Nice to meet everybody. Thank you. Welcome, Erin. Paula. Two great additions. Thank you very much. Okay, our first presentation is by Principal Stephanie Nance of Crestwood Middle School. Good evening to everyone. We bring you greetings from 64 Sparrow Drive, just right down the street. We lovingly call it the Eagle's Nest. You also know it as Crestwood Middle School. I'm very much the thankful and humble principal, Stephanie Nance. This is my 16th year as principal of Crestwood Middle School, and I have had the distinct pleasure of serving the village of Royal Palm Beach now for 27 years. And so uh, I like to say that we're vested and invested. I used to say that I was old as the furniture, but due to your tax dollars and the money, we have new furniture now. So not as old as the furniture anymore. So uh, it is truly a pleasure to come out tonight uh, to present to you the great things that are happening at Crestwood Middle School. We have great students. We have awesome and supportive families, many of which are here tonight. Uh, and we serve a wonderful, wonderful community here in Royal Palm Beach. And so uh, it is truly an honor, and thank you again to the board for allowing me to come out tonight just to talk to you a little bit for the next few minutes about the great things that are happening at Crestwood. And so we're going to kick off these great things that are happening at Crestwood by first showcasing two of our programs tonight. Very happy to have with me in the audience two outstanding educators, uh, one to your left and one to your right. And first we're going to begin with Ms. Trish Duber, who is our visual arts teacher at Crestwood Middle School. And right behind me with these beautiful children that you see, uh, it, in attendance with her, Ms. Janine Jarvis, Director of Bands at Crestwood. So we will begin with Ms. Duber, our visual arts teacher. Thank you so much uh, for being in attendance and 
First, I just want to thank you for all of the support that the village gives to our school and to our district, as well as the voters, because if it wasn't for your support in passing the referendum, a lot of the great things that we do in the arts wouldn't be possible. So, you know, from the bottom of our hearts and our students' hearts, thank you so much for that support. Um, a lot of you, when you first came in, you saw the display boards out front, and when I'm done speaking, I'm gonna move them up so that you guys can enjoy them throughout the presentation and during the meeting. But you also got to see some of the work that is hanging up, and I just wanna tell you, as their art teacher, I could not be more proud of the work that our students do. They are amazing young people. I get goosebumps when I talk about them because as an educator, you can lead them, as you say, to the water, but you can't make them drink. And these kids, our students at Crestwood Middle School are lapping it up and they cannot get enough. They want more, they stay late, they come early, they work through their lunches. Um, they eat lunch in the art room and still want to work on their artwork. So um, to generate that kind of love for learning, to uh, inspire them and to educate them and to affirm them, that's what we're all about. And this is just a small part of the exciting things happening at Crestwood. I hope that you do take an opportunity to really uh, take a closer look at the artwork because this, these are all, all levels of talent. Um, I meet the students where they're at and then, you know, partnering with them, you know, res with respect and love and encouragement, you know, push them gently to a higher level of excellence in their artistic skills. But it's not just about creating, you know, art. It's about building in to our young people to make them amazing young people that become amazing young adults and older adults as in, in our community and show them the, you know, the love that they deserve to get. So a few things I do want to mention. We have just been so blessed with recognition, not only locally, but also regionally di recognition within our district. Uh, we've had national recognition. We've had two uh, Art in the Capital art winners, and they, this is a national competition where they take one piece of artwork from every school in the county. So that's charter, public, private, all over. And two of the last three years, our students won first place and their work was hanging in the Capitol building in Washington, DC. Now, I don't know about you, but that's pretty impressive. When you, one of the very first things that I did is partnered, I believe, with you, and we designed, I'm very proud of it, one of um, the free libraries, little free libraries that went in the community. So doing things like that as well. We had the first place winner in the superintendent's greeting card contest. We had first and second place in the I Voted um, contest that was put on by the Board of Elections, which was so cool where their stickers were handed out. Um, it, it is just amazing things that are going on. And, you know, I could just go on and on about them, you know, the recognition that they have received. But none of it would happen if it wasn't for you, you know, with the support that you've shown us, the administration as well. I couldn't do what I do if it wasn't for their support. We are blessed with an amazing administrative staff, an amazing counseling staff, you know, all of us working together. If it wasn't for the counseling staff, what, what you guys do is phenomenal. Such an important piece of the puzzle. You know, the students are an important piece. The educators are an important piece. The administration, the community, the village of which we are housed, and, you know, the community members. So um, I just want to thank you. Um, and please enjoy the work, and I'm really looking forward. Mrs. Jarvis is just an amazing educator, and those students are so talented. I just love to listen to them. But thank you so much for the opportunity to be here tonight. And that's a lot to follow, because I second a lot of that, um, especially as far as the um, referendum. Uh, the band in particular has tremendously benefited with new instruments, and it's just 
Amazing is the word. I, I really don't know what else to say with all the support that we've been getting. It's a wonderful time to be in the arts. Um, and I've also grown up in this county um, since I was six. So I've all, all the way through, my mom was a teacher. And so it really, truly is a per perfect time to be in the arts and the support that we're receiving from, from the constituents to our um, school board to everybody. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about our program. Uh, we have about 120 students in the band program. Um, I do have leveled groups, so we have our beginning groups, we have our concert band, and we have our symphonic band. Um, before you is our jazz band. This is a volunteer group. Uh, we do not meet during the school day. They come in two mornings a week, like she said. You know, they come in to practice on their own. It's not a grade, um, because they love it. And you're going to see that as we perform today. Uh, we've also had some significant um, recognition. Actually, this weekend we went participating in the countywide solo and ensemble. Uh, we had 26 entries, all receiving superiors and a couple excellence, uh, which we're extremely proud of. We also have a student in our jazz band right now who represents us at the all-state um, honor bands and all-county honor bands, so Peyton Earl on trombone. <laughs> and it's truly wonderful watching these students, starting them in sixth grade, and seeing what they're able to accomplish um, just with the effort and the love that they have of music. And so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and show you. Thank you. 
appreciate thank you. your audience and um, all of your support. Great job. Thank you to uh, Ms. Duber and Ms. Jarvis. And please, parents, we want to give you a round of applause. So let's thank our parents for coming out and supporting our program. Thank you so much. Uh, we know we're going to have a slight transition, but we're going to keep going as the uh, jazz band students uh, start to uh, pack up and moms and dads are going to help. So we're going to um, move it forward. <laughs> it's always good to know you got one, right? And so again, thank you so much uh, for allowing us to come on out tonight. And so we're going to move on into the presentation, if it's okay. Um, before we begin, I just want to uh, say at Crestwood Middle School, uh, we are truly a team. Actually, the acronym for us, uh, when, we, when it comes to the word team, we believe together Eagles achieve more. And so uh, as school principal, uh, it is truly um, an honor and a blessing to come to a school site each and every day where you have 100 plus like-minded uh, professionals and educators in their, in their uh, respective fields and roles that share that same sentiment that we are a team at Crestwood. And so tonight I just want to uh, give you an opportunity to meet some of the team members at Crestwood. This is not work that is done in silo. Uh, as a principal, uh, I truly believe that teamwork makes the dream work. And so I want to take a moment to introduce to you some of the members of the Crestwood administrative team. As a matter of fact, they're going to introduce themselves. Okay. <laughs> Martin Pascarello, assistant principal, 18 years at Crestwood Middle School. Did some math, 160,000 miles I've driven to and from just work. Why? <laughs> because this is a great place to be. Um, spending 18 years in any one place means something. And uh, between the community, um, our parents, our students, our staff, it is truly, um, the grass is probably not green on our side. This is a great place to be. The grass is pretty green. And it goes with the team we work with now, and over the years, work with many teams. And as we prepare our students um, for their journey, we're also preparing this school for its next journey, facility-wise, and our staff and our teams that we've developed throughout the years and the upcoming years. Uh, good evening. The name is Claude Smith. Uh, seventh grade administrator at Crestwood Middle School. Uh, I'm actually returning back to Crestwood Middle School. I uh, was formerly a science teacher at Crestwood Middle School. Um, I call it home, but uh, the adage is, once an eagle, always an eagle. So I'm back home. Thank you. Good evening. I don't have to crouch down like the rest of them, which is kind <laughs> of nice. Um, Melissa Callister, assistant principal. Uh, this is my eighth year here at Crestwood Middle School, but I started in Palm Beach County educating individuals since 1999, so it's been very exciting. And I have some former students that I've worked with that are now like adults and have children of their own in the village, so that makes me feel really young and 
you know, I'm just excited to be here at Crestwood Middle School. Um, it has been an honor and privilege working at Crestwood Middle School. Um, we've evolved, and uh, as times have changed, so has Crestwood. And it's wonderful. If you've not been on the campus in a little bit, you should come by and see it. It's beautiful. We've had lots of nice, wonderful um, enhancements done, and it just shows you how wonderful uh, Crestwood Middle School is. So thank you so much for allowing us to uh, spend the evening with you. So thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so that is who we are. We are Crestwood Middle School. Uh, this is our total faculty and staff that you see before you. And uh, at Crestwood, uh, we truly believe that if we're setting high standards for our students, we also have to set those same high standards for ourselves as educators. So we are committed to uh, building capacity. We're committed to being lifelong learners at Crestwood. And so I'm just highlighting for you, uh, before you on this screen, some of the accomplishments uh, of many of our educators at Crestwood uh, Middle School. As I mentioned uh, before, at Crestwood Middle School, we are committed to service here in the village. And so 81% of our teachers have seven or more years of teaching experience, and the average staff tenure at Crestwood is seven years. A little bit more uh, about who we are at Crestwood. Uh, we are very pleased to share that for many years we were a state-rated state school of A. And recently, uh, we have continued to hold our B rating at Crestwood. And I truly feel that that is an accomplishment in itself. When you have 60% of your students that remained virtual uh, for 18 months during the pandemic and to be able to come back to school and still uh, perform at that level uh, is not to be taken lightly. Um, and that just speaks to the commitment of our students, um, of our parents, and of our Crestwood uh, family. And so at Crestwood, uh, as you can see, our population right now is 742 students. And you see the demographics before you. Uh, Crestwood is what I call our beautiful mosaic. And you see that throughout the entire campus. And you see it in all of the classrooms and programs that we offer at Crestwood. And I am very pleased and, and I'm proud to say uh, when you see the students transitioning through the halls, uh, over 22 plus languages are spoken uh, by our students at Crestwood and over 31 different countries of birth. Uh, so we definitely are that mosaic. We are that beautiful, beautiful melting pot uh, at Crestwood. And so, uh, again, we are committed to academic excellence. And before you uh, is our school grades report. And we are very pleased to say that out of the nine accountability cells upon which we are measured uh, as pertains to our state assessment, formerly known now as the Florida uh, Standards Assessment, we are very pleased that last school year we increased seven out of those nine accountability cells at Crestwood. So we are definitely heading in the right direction. And again, that is the, that is the dedication of our students, uh, the dedication of our staff, the support of our families. It cannot be done in isolation. So this is truly a testament that when we say it takes a village, it takes a village. And so we continue to sort of greatness. Uh, but that village commitment is a shared one. And I am just so uh, thankful uh, and blessed to be supported by some outstanding fellow educators here in the village. I uh, have great relationships with all of the principals uh, here in the village. We communicate with each other. We stay in tune with one another to ensure that as our students matriculate through their educational journey, that they know that they're supported on every level. And so not just with the actual support, but also we are committed to the village's uh, K-12 continuum. And so uh, we continue to align our programs so that as students are matriculating from elementary to middle to high, if there's a particular area of focus that he or she is interested in, they will be able to uh, soar and grow in that area, especially from elementary, middle to high. 
One of tonight that we're going to highlight uh, is our uh, Cambridge program. We're going to talk a little bit more uh, about that. But those are just some of the programs uh, that we offer at Crestwood that students receive also at the elementary level as well as at Royal Palm Beach High School. And so our compass at Crestwood, it all begins with a single school culture. Uh, we believe that there is power in speaking with one voice. And so that is our mission. Our mission is to not just uh, prepare students uh, for high school. So high school readiness, of course, is a very important part of it. But also part of the middle school journey uh, is educating our kids, affirming who they are. Uh, accepting them for who they are and where they are and building them from, from that level on. And also continue to inspire them, to let them know that what, whatever their journey is, that they're going to be okay if we work together as a team to ensure that they are being able uh, to uh, reach their potential. And so part of that is teaching students how to develop their voice, to be advocates for themselves, to speak up, to speak out. So the middle school journey does not just encompass uh, just the academic aspect. There are so many other important components uh, when we talk about the development of our young people. And we understand that at Crestwood, and so we, we work to uh, create that type of learning environment so that we can cultivate positive relationships with our students and staff, as well as our parents. And so our goals this year at Crestwood, we continue to focus on student proficiency. Again, it's all about readiness. It's all about readiness for, for each grade level. Uh, learning games, that, that has been one of our areas of focus. We do know that this year with our set assessment, there will not be a focus on learning games. But growth, growth is very important. We need to be able to measure to see how our students are growing and at what increments are, are they growing. And so we use a variety of different, uh, different assessments in order to uh, measure and monitor their growth. Also, as I mentioned before, if we're setting high standards for students, we have to set high standards for ourselves. So we are committed to uh, continue to provide collaborative and authentic POC, stands for professional learning communities. And this is where our teachers meet at Crestwood Middle School. Our teachers meet three times a month and they work together they plan together, they look at their assessments, they look at their instructional delivery, they look at the practices behind their instructional delivery to see if it aligns to what the areas of focus need to be for that respective grade level when it comes to standards. And of course, cultivating and fostering positive relationships uh, is at the heartbeat of that. And so at Crestwood, we do have a student first philosophy. We believe in our kids. We believe in our students at Crestwood, and our goal uh, is to provide every opportunity for a student at the middle school level at Crestwood Middle School to be able to connect. Because research shows, but not just research, because research is very important, but if when a student is connected to their school, their achievement levels will likely increase as compared to a student that is not connected to school. And we all know the truth behind that, and we, know, we all know what that looks like. But the beautiful thing about middle school is that each student has their own journey. That is what I love. So my journey may be a little different than your journey, but are we affording our students the opportunity to connect and remain connected? And so part of that work for us is helping students reach their potential developing their voice and positive relationships. And so I'm just very pleased, I'm not gonna steal the thunder of our awesome school counseling team who's here tonight, but here before you, there are some photos uh, of, of just some of the programs uh, that we provide at Crestwood to allow them to do that. Whether up in the top left corner, you have our National Junior Honor Society students going to pack uh, meals uh, for veterans. Whether in the middle, uh, you have students that are recently part, were recently part of our best buddies, and that's all I'm going to say. It's an awesome program and our school counseling team. I know, I've been shushed on that. Uh, whether it's our commitment to the upcoming community event, Relay for Life, which we did exceed our um, target goal of $1,500. As a matter of fact, we went well over $2,000 in raising funds for that event, which is next month. Um, and below, uh, where you see before you uh, one of our parent um, events that we've had, and again, I'm not going to steal the thunder of my counseling team, they're going to talk about that. But again, we, we, we are very much committed to um, helping our students, again, reach their potential. And so, tonight you saw some of the beautiful artwork I wanted to share with you again, creating tomorrow's leaders through academic arts and culture, because it truly is about the 
you know, growing the whole child. As I said, academics, of course, is very important, but what else interests our students? And so at Crestwood, we're always looking at our programs to ensure that every student can connect to a program at Crestwood. And so tonight, I just wanted to highlight some some more of our uh, uh, art students. Ms. Duber um, has created an initiative at Crestwood where it's called Artists of the Week. And so these are some of the students that you see before you uh, that have received that awesome distinction of Artists of the Week at Crestwood. And so an Eagle's work is never done. Again, being committed to the whole child, just to give you a little bit uh, more information about our programs, we offer over 15 um, high school courses at Crestwood Middle School. We have an on-site high school uh, lab where students can enroll in a high school credit course. Um, we have a growing percentage of our students at Crestwood Middle School that walk out of Crestwood, and I know Principal Fleming will appreciate this, they walk out of Crestwood with high school credits, four to five high school credits already under their belt. And so uh, we continue to uh, uh, grow that program. Also, literacy. We know that literacy is, is the foundation of all learning. So those are some of our literacy programs, our clubs, uh, from academic games to robotics. We offer all the sports. But most importantly, uh, as someone mentioned before, it is also about making sure that we are preparing the next generation of productive citizens in society. So we are very much committed to our growing civics and business partnerships, uh, which is under the leadership of Mrs. Uh, Callister. And I, I lost count of the last time. I think we have 30 plus uh, business partners at Crestwood Middle School. And so, as I mentioned, uh, Creating that culture where our teams, where our teachers can come together and we can celebrate success. Um, and so these are just some picks from uh, just events that have happened throughout the school year. And of course, Mr. Pascarillo that earned the spirit belt in the bottom right corner. Uh, that's him flashing the spirit belt. So uh, you have to hear them, they're interesting because they are truly, truly competitive when it comes to that spirit belt. <laughs> Yes, they are. Okay, and so we continue again to, co to cultivate those positive relationships. And some of the photos that you see before you are different parent nights and trainings that we offer at Crestwood Middle School. And our school counseling team is gonna talk a little bit more about that. But we know that education has to be a partnership. It has to. Parents who stay involved in their children's lives when it comes to education, they likely do better in school. We know that. And so at Crestwood, we're committed to continue to increase our parental involvement, but most importantly, giving our parents resources and tools that they can use to support their children through their education. And so tonight, I'm so uh, happy to come to you, and I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Callister momentarily to talk with you about Crestwood's Cambridge program. We are so excited, and I must say thank you to Principal Fleming and the Royal Palm Beach High School family for their support financial support, because that's always important, uh, of helping us to launch the Cambridge Pre-ACE program at Crestwood Middle School. So I'm going to turn it over uh, to Ms. Melissa Callister to talk a little bit about Cambridge. Good evening again. So it's very exciting to um, introduce Cambridge to Crestwood Middle School. So it's very special to have uh, the Cambridge program at the middle school level. Um, not a lot of middle schools have it, and we are excited to offer it. So we offer the lower secondary program. So it's you can see here uh, there are um, four stages. We have the primary. We have the lower secondary, which is where Crestwood falls into play. We have the upper secondary, which is uh, Royal Palm, high school has, and then we have the Cambridge Advanced as well. So it's very exciting that we are able to matriculate our students, um, and I believe they started um, H.L. Johnson, correct? So they started H.L. Johnson with those wonderful skills and attributes, and then now they're going to be with us for, um, we're starting sixth grade students, and then next year we're going to have our sixth and seventh grade students, and then the following year we'll have sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. So, and we're going to be adding on our content as well. So, some of you might be wondering what are the benefits? We do have a few speakers that are going to uh, 
a tribute to that just momentarily. Um, they're confident, responsible, reflective, innovative, and engaged. So that's some of the uh, attributes that our students will face. And so the wonderful thing about bringing Cambridge to the middle school level is that they will not only have these wonderful skills that they're going to be utilizing at the middle school level, they're going to be taking those skills to the high school level. And so that is a great uh, gift that they have been given, and we're um, able to expand that to our students. So more benefits. Um, we are preparing our students for life. Um, our programs stretch, challenge, and inspire students of all abilities. They develop deep subject knowledge, conceptual understanding, and higher order thinking skills. And the qualifications are widely recognized by universities and employers around the world. So a lot of different skills, a lot of writing, a lot of um, hands-on activities that the students do when they are taking these um, classes. So right now we are offering language arts and math. Uh, for the Cambridge, and we are looking to expand science next year and eventually possibly even arts. So we're very excited to just expand the program. We have also global perspectives, which we incorporate that into our world um, history course. So lots of wonderful things. All right. So before I turn it over, if we have, I do have a one of our language arts Cambridge teachers. If she was, that's Miss Harris, and she brought a couple students with her who are uh, Cambridge students. They they're in fully emerged. Would they like to say anything or? Good evening, everyone. Um, I teach sixth grade Cambridge language art. I have two students, one my, my baby, and then <laughs> my, my classroom baby. So um, I just want to let them talk about just some things, some activities we've done. They're a little nervous. Um, so how about you guys want to talk about some things that you guys do in math and language art? Like, for instance, FSP reviews, what do you guys um, we go over questions with each other and we help each other figure out the answers and wrong answers. Most of the time. But, <laughs> and then we do projects with each other and it helps us build social skills and also a way to help build their communication as well as not necessarily just depending on the teacher, but they're able to depend on themselves. Because like I tell them, when you guys take your assessments, you're um, completing your assignments, we're not going to always be there. So they're able to depend more so on each other versus the teacher. And we're just able to just guide and assist them while they are processing. Madam Chair, can I, can I ask a question? Yes. Oh, so um, that's a great approach. It, it really is to teach one another and that kind of thing. Uh, you got to tell me what that sweatshirt is about. Oh, okay. Well, thanks for sharing. <laughs> um, so our uh, teachers that are teaching Cambridge, they're always learning. Um, and there's actually a round table next week that they're going to be attending. I'll be able to join with them. And then at the end of the month, we are going to be headed to Royal Palm High School, where we're going to actually walk some classrooms. So our teachers are going to be able to see uh, some of our general and 
ACE, uh, ACE General Papers class, which is a, pr prominently a ninth grade course. And so our uh, teachers are going to be able to watch and observe. And so we're very excited about some of these upcoming events. Thank you. Thank you, Estelle. Okay. And so, you know, again, at the center of that, it, it is truly about relationships and nothing has more impact in a life, uh, in the life of a child than through the development of those positive relationships while at the same time uh, you're working to teach them the content they, that they know and need to be ready to be able to demonstrate in order to move to the next level. And so we, you know, we understand again the importance of that. And so last year, I did remember uh, the level of interest of this board when we talked about how we are addressing the mental health needs of our students at Crestwood. And because of your level of interest, we wanted to bring to you the work behind that and exactly what that looks like at Crestwood. Because as I mentioned, for 18 months, 60% of our kids remain virtual. And so we understood the importance of reconnecting and helping our students to learn skills to plug back in uh, to school when we return to school. And so we know that that was not going to just be a one year initiative. So we continue to develop a multi-year approach around that work. And so I am very pleased to ask to come before me uh, at this time and before all of you, uh, members of the Crestwood Middle School counseling team, and they're going to talk to you about Skills for Learning and Life. This is our new district logo around SEL, which we used to call social emotional learning. And so uh, they will all introduce themselves and they're going to talk to you about that. Okay, so I'm going to stop presenting so that they can pull up their own presentation. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Right. My name is Lisa Hutchins. Um, I have been at Crestwood Middle School now. This is my ninth year um, as school counselor. Um, this is Marianne Shaw. Hello. She is our sixth grade counselor. Monica Pugh, our mm -hmm. seventh grade counselor. And Malachi Sander, who is head of our buildings department. <laughs> <laughs> Malachi has a little word that he's going to say, so we wanted to bring him up here with us, but no, not at the time of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but these two beautiful ladies are Brandon and Crestwood, uh -huh. but they come with a lot of wealth and knowledge, and Ms. Pugh has been a school counselor for how many years? 18 years. And she came from, she did middle school, she did high school, and then she was a district leader in mm -hmm. her previous um, job. And Ms. Saw comes with a wealth of book knowledge. <laughs> She's a first-year counselor. Um, they teach her all the ways that it's supposed to be done. And then, you know, we throw her in the real world and say, all right, now just. <laughs> so we're happy to be here. Um, I, like I said, I've been with uh, Crestwood for nine years. And over those years, uh, there's been a lot of changes. I don't know why I'm looking at the audience. I'm going to be looking at you guys. Um, there's been a lot of changes in what's going on in, in society. Um, the challenges that come after Mar Marjorie Stillman Douglas. Um, with that terrible tragedy and then of course COVID and lockdown and all the mental health issues that continue to grow. I know um, one of my biological children I was seeking therapy for and I couldn't get him anywhere. Every single child therapist at this time which was oh, about nine months ago was booked up and there's such a huge need for mental health services for kids right now and I'm sure the same is for adults but of course I focus on children. Um, that I had to take it into a virtual kind of perspective and get them on one of those apps. Turns out the ladies down in Boca, you know, I, I don't know why we couldn't just drive there, but, you know, it, we have to be creative in how we get help for our kids these days. Um, and so we're trying to do that at Crestwood, too, from a mental health perspective, um, from a building connections perspective, from trying to kind of rebuild the spirit and uh, in the academic integrity and drive um, of these children. So it's quite a challenge right now, as all of you guys know. Um, and I think the first slide, which button do I press to go on this one? 
that's our mission statement. So our mission statement um, is kind of boring. Um, we're going to talk about our Wellness Wednesdays and our social emotional learning. And this is Ms. Saw, who is head of our SEL. Good evening. Thank you for having us. Um, so as Lisa Hutchins mentioned, um, my name is Mary Ann Saw. I'm actually a product of this county school. So I went to um, two different elementary schools, two different middle schools, and then one high school. So I know that the hard, um, you know, how hard middle school can be. And so that's why I decided to do middle school. I'm the sixth grade counselor. So a lot of transitions, a lot of different um, environments, friend, finding new friends, a lot of changes going on. Um, our skills for learning in life help the students build, you know, um, skills that they can take on after middle school, such as, you know, building resilience, academic success, like study skills. Um, they can build confidence, also supporting mental health by um, communicating efficiently and effectively with each other. Uh, just the other day, last Wednesday, we had an assertive communication style where not, you know, the, the students learned not to necessarily communicate aggressively or passively, but how to communicate assertively. And so that was just one of the um, lessons we had last week. So pretty much skills for learning in life is the new SLL logo, um, right? It used to be named SEL. Um, it still teaches social emotional learning, but this time it kind of gives it a broader aspect of not just emotions, but also academically speaking and um, building relationships and things like that. So it helps youth and adults to achieve academic, post-secondary, career, and life success. And then also strengthens teaching and learning of academic content, builds confidence, and supports mental health and enables resiliency, which, you know, in middle school, you're bouncing back from many difficult challenges, um, anything from at-home issues like divorce or grief. Um, so I help a lot of students, uh, or we help a lot of students build those skills that kind of battle anxiety from coming back from school, from, you know, being in school, but they were like fourth, fifth grade to now sixth grade, and they're just learning how to communicate more efficiently and get along better without, you know, arguing and this and that. We do mediations, things of that nature. Um, so Wellness Wednesdays, as I mentioned, um, last week's lesson was communicating assertively. Um, as part of the Wellness Wednesday initiative. Um, I also send with the lesson a Google form and I get feedback from the students. That way I can we can kind of monitor their progress, their understanding, and it, uh, it's kind of small to see, but these um, circle graphs show the levels of sixth, seventh, and eighth graders participating, um, if they understand the content, and also, um, you know, kind of challenging them to think creatively. They open up on their Chromebook and they answer the Google questions along after they do the lesson with the teacher. And so we get the teacher and student um, communication about communicating assertively for this example. And then they go on their Chromebooks and answer the Google form. So that way we can um, collect that data. Oh. Back to you, Lisa. <laughs> This slide is my shh slide. When I shh, Dr. Nee. Because <laughs> this is one of my babies right here, Best Buddies Club. Those of you in high school um, know what that club is, I'm sure. Um, the Best Buddies Club, and I, I know you in elementary school. I'm not sure if we have any in our district and in our group here, but I know Everglades does Best Buddies. Um, this is from the middle school perspective. We're allowed to be a little more creative. Uh, in high school, it's or kids with more severe disabilities are put in one-on-one -on -one relationships with, with the general education child. Sorry. <laughs> um, in the middle school area, we are able to be more creative, like I said. So we can bring in children with any kind of disability. It may be um, something just as simple as a learning disability versus an intellectual disability. Either way, we get bring in um, students with disabilities, and we partner them up with students that don't have disabilities to build friendships and build relationships. Um, and so this is one of my favorite things. 
because it's really a lot of fun. That we, When we had our last meeting, one of the students went back to class and told the teacher, Miss Cerise, that was my best day ever. Yeah. So that was our, that's is our newest group. That's another picture. Um, easing transitions. My elementary principals know about our easing transitions program, but that's where we bring in the elementary fifth graders over to our school, and we have them spend the day with us. We bus them in. We show them a lot of our things that we have to offer, cheerleaders, band, handbells, chorus, all the fun stuff. Then they get to have a real middle school lunch, which is so very exciting. And all our students get to see their former teachers and run up and hug them. Then we take them on tours of the school, and then we come back and we let them learn how to use the locks. So it's like their first day of middle school. At the, this time, we did it so early in November, and that was thanks to um, one of the principals had that brilliant idea, let's get them in before the end of the choice window closes, which we did. But those kids were so scared when they walked in that day. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's a huge difference from seeing fifth graders in November versus fifth graders in March. They tend to grow and change a lot. Uh, we had a suicide awareness week where students made a heart for hope um, in regards to suicide awareness, and this was um, their hearts for hope. We have all pro dad, which Ms. Teresa says about. Good evening again. Um, one of the great um, initiatives we have at our school is all pro dad, where we focus on the men in the lives of our students. And so we always focus on the moms all the time showing up. And so three times a year, we want to bring focus to dads where they bring their sons, their daughters. We had some moms come as well, but uncles, any positive role model um, in the students' lives. We kind of did a whole, um, actually, our keynote speaker this year was from Royal Palm High School, which was amazing. Um, we had about 80 dads show. Um, with their students, we gave out uh, prizes to the dads and the students. And so our next All Pro Dad meeting is actually this Thursday um, at 8.15. 8.15. And one of the great things that we did is all the male figures in our school, like our administrators, they actually kind of facilitated the whole program that day. And so it was just men takeover. Um, and so that was, I know, it was, I know man takeover. And so they were ready. Um, the dads and the students had a good time. But I wanted to kind of read the purpose of um, All Pro Dad just so we can have an understanding of the impact that fathers are, why they're so important. Um, but the, the pro initiative is driven um, by dads and fathers and male caregivers. It's a platform in which parents can network with one another, share thoughts and ideas on strengthening positive connections with their children. And they also learn how to stay involved in their child's education, engaging in discussions on social emotional learning, uh, topics impacting students, as well as learning about services and supports uh, within our district and our school. And so this week, um, the theme is kindness. And so everything is built around kindness and dads and their kids will interact around activities relating to kindness so and we invite you to come if you would like to come at 8 15 a.m on thursday oh this one we just did last week we call it chat and chew with the counseling crew and the night before my kids were making fun of me because i was walking around on all night going chat and chew with the counseling crew <laughs> they thought it was you know, mom being dumb. <laughs> anyway, this is a quarterly school counseling team um, where we have an open forum and parents join us and we discuss uh, mental health issues. We discuss um, things that our team is doing to help others within the school, um, our children, the academics. We had, you can see it was both online and virtual. It was kind of small, but it was at 10 o'clock in the morning. So I was pretty pleased that we got that amount of people. And the goal is for them to bring a friend for the next one, and then the one after that will bring another friend. Um, and hopefully we'll get that to grow. But the, it was nice to hear um, it, 
for the first time, I think, in one meeting, the whole focus was on children and mental health. And it wasn't us doing all the talking. It was the parents as well and telling how they help one another and what they've done and asking questions of us. It was very inspirational. SWAG, uh, this is a student recognition program. And it's students with amazing growth. And the teacher is to recognize every single student by the end of the school year. And so that is sometimes the only way some students ever get any recognition is because they are, we're doing it through this program. We're making sure all 746 of our students get one of these awards and with something nice said by the teacher. Thank you. So on a roll, um, so every quarter we recognize our students who make straight A's and A's and B's. And so you can see this was our first nine weeks on a row celebration where we had the eighth grade, the seventh grade, and the sixth grade. Um, this nine weeks we invited the parents to join us in celebrating um, their students and them as well. And so oftentimes those kids who are doing all the right things, who are making all the right decisions, you know, we tend to kind of not spend a lot of time with them. And so this is our way of celebrating them. They have an ice cream social. Um, and so we're honoring them and we would like to invite you again to come out to that February 24th, starting at, I think, 12, 1, 120, 120. So please come out and help celebrate our sixth, seventh and eighth graders who have maintained all A's and A's and B's. And so any parents in the audience, please join us as well. Oh, and we also have a virtual um, component as well. So if you would like, we would send you the virtual link to participate. And also for all pro men as well. <laughs> and one more thing. Safe <laughs> uh, School Ambassadors, this is a program where um, students are nominated to be a part of a, the Safe School Ambassador program. And um, somebody comes in from the district and trains these students specifically on how to intervene in situations that may not be productive and healthy. But they do it in a healthy manner. They don't take on anything that they shouldn't be taking on, but maybe try to redirect or um, you know, stop a conversation and, and change it in the, from a negative conversation to a positive conversation. Um, and so this definitely is like a bullying prevention program as well. Um, and a lot of times these students are our ears. Uh, when they hear something that's going on, um, they're, they, they're one of the first kids that usually comes and reports it to us so that we as the professionals can take over the more difficult situations. Peer mediators, this program um, we have not fully developed this year because the district didn't provide us with that. So we've gotten creative and kind of made up our own program. And we have a student representative here. One of our star mediators, he has a natural skill and talent, uh, but Miss Pew is honing in on it with him and teaching and guiding him and helping him. So tell us a little bit about what you do as a student mediator. So uh, as a peer mediator, you know, something happens with the kids. We go in this like little office just to the kids, and then we talk to the kids. You know, I have a partner, but they're unfortunately not here. Uh, we talk to them. We get everything through, and they usually feel a little bit better than if they went to go talk with the normal counselor because they wouldn't be able to get many things, as they say, when we're there. And they won't even get in trouble for it. We don't snitch. <laughs> uh, that's basically what we do, and everybody likes it from what I've seen and what my partner has seen. Everybody agrees that. Yeah. One correction, they do not snitch as long as it's not causing hurt, harm, or danger to any <laughs> other students, okay? I, I just want to put that out there. Some other ongoing initiatives are um, group counseling, which we offer for anxiety, depression, behavior issues, coping skills, goal setting, 
We have a mindfulness club that meets after school. Um, and we also have a Just Say Hello initiative, which um, kind of gets students to say hello to other students. Just say hello, as like it sounds, um, to provide a warm and welcoming environment. We also have an ESOL club. Um, and this club meets with Ms. Zafra, um, where they build connectedness and work on their English fluency at the same time. And we have an Eagles in Action Club, which is a, a socially responsible environmental awareness. Um, a teacher has recently taken on the recycling, but we're more, this club is more about um, giving food that could be wasted to other students that perhaps need the food. Um, so it's like the shared meal. <laughs> and now Miss Swell. Thank you. Um, so another social emotional um, initiative and incentive, or SLL as we call it now, um, is Character Now, and it's um, it's from the district, and it pretty much emphasizes on the seven pillars of character. We have demonstrating respect, being responsible being generous and helpful, which is like charity, um, being honest and trustworthy, showing empathy and kindness, demonstrating tolerance, and then cooperating and demonstrating citizenship. And so um, each week we highlight, um, we have to cover seven pillars throughout the year. We started in January, so right now we're, we're pretty much like doubling up um, two per month. So for right now, every two weeks, we uh, cover one pillar at a time. We put it on the school news and tell the students what it means to demonstrate respect and give us some examples. And then we, um, I send out, we send out another Google form for the teachers to um, pretty much pick a student that's been consistently demonstrating these pillars. And then um, about two months ago, I think before, right before uh, winter break, what you see the picture on the right is the you are invited to um, invitation for the students who were nominated for the last three um, months for each pillar. And so they came and they got an ice cream social and got to spend time and got awards as well. And then they were broadcasted on the school news just to show what good character can um, result in and like acknowledging that and honoring that. Um, and then the next one would be demonstrating tolerance. So for this month, we're about to put on the school news about what demonstrating tolerance looks like and then sending out the Google Forms to the teachers to nominate a student that um, is demonstrating tolerance. And then we go, and then the, uh, at the end of the year, we have one student or, or a handful go to the district and they're presented an award that hasn't been disclosed yet, so I'm not sure what they're getting, but they are going to be invited to the district and celebrated and for giving good character. Uh, Crestwood Mental Health Summit. That is a one full day of mental health learning, which is actually the governor's mandates. Um, so we have to follow specific curriculum that the district gives us, which is in three, Suite 360. But it is a really powerful program that um, focuses, again, on the mental health. There, the topics include child trafficking, substance misuse and abuse, and online safety. Um, and there are a lot of important discussions that come up of this. But we, we do our mental health summit in one day, like I said. So there's six lessons. And each class period, we conquer one lesson and move to the next. Um, it's very powerful, very exhausting. Parent connection. So I started parent connection during lockdown. Um, because it was, it was a weekly online forum for parents and then whatever staff was able to come and join us that night. Um, but it was to assist the parents that had no idea what their children were supposed to be doing, no idea how to log into Google Classroom, no idea how to check grades, no idea how to figure out how to get their kid out of bed to go do his work. You know, all those things that those of you that are parents struggled with during that time period. And so that was our way of supporting the parents as they had to take on a new role. Um, and then Parent Connection has now kind of transitioned into, instead of it being a weekly meeting, um, now we do it quarterly. But the, the goal and the focus is still the same. In order for our children and our students to succeed, we need the parents to be able there to support and guide them and help them 
And the parents sometimes don't have the tools because they didn't know how to have the tools. And so we're there to answer those questions and provide those tools to parents. Bullying Awareness Month. Go again. <laughs> um, so we are actually um, about to put again on the school news about Pink Shirt Day, which is February 22nd. And that <clears throat> is mainly to show, you know, letting, letting us be kind to each other, which is also why um, All Pro Dad's theme is kindness. You know, February is to show friendship and friendliness. Um, during the month of October, it was Stomp Out Bullying. Um, so I took the district's flyer and information and kind of made it into like a fun um, flyer to put around the school. And um, during that time... We also, I went around during lunch, and if that somebody forgot to wear blue or orange, they, um, I went around and passed out uh, bracelets that symbolize, you know, not to bully, and you're going to be a friend to everybody else. So a lot of the kids would come to us and, and ask for those bracelets, and so some kids have it on till this day, and it's all, like, almost falling off their wrists, but <laughs> it's, it's there. Um, and so on October 3rd, it was wear blue, hashtag blew up. And then on Wednesday, October 19th, was wear orange, so to show unity and that they won't um, be bullying others. And then um, each week had a different theme, so one was make friends with someone you don't know, stand up for others, inclusion week, don't let anyone eat alone, and then meet with peers and change the culture. So we just had a conversation with the students. And then again, um, on February 22nd, that's when we're going to do Pink Shirt Day so everybody can kind of wear pink which a lot of kids are excited about because some of our dress, co our dress code doesn't include pink, so they're definitely going to go all out <laughs> for that one. And I think Miss Lee was saying, come see us on the 22nd for wear your pink shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our team up there. Um, as you can see, it's the four of us. Are like, what? You, well, that's not us. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. P and I work very closely together, and so he was kind of reading my mind, I think. Um, that four of us are here, but as you can see, the gentleman is not here, and his name is Chauncey Davis. He is our behavioral health professional, so I have eighth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade. Um, Mr. Davis has the whole school. However, he has a very specific niche, and he works, oh, you want to mute the microphone. <laughs> he works with, um, specifically with children that um, primarily are having behavioral problems, and a lot of times these are young men. Uh, that are figuring out how to kind of transition from the little baby um, era that they came from and try to transition into becoming more of a young man before they head over to high school. And so he helps them with a lot of those challenges, a lot of the friendship challenges, a lot of the expressing anger and frustration challenges that these boys tend to face. Um, he works with girls too, but um, he primarily his expertise is with young men. And so we're very happy to have him as a part of our counseling team. Now, before the Marjorie, Marjorie Stone, Stoneman Douglas tragedy, it was me and one other counselor, and we had more students. And since that tragedy, you have seen how the well, my team has grown. Now there's four of us. Um, that shows just where as a society we're heading with how mental health is so important and how connectedness and um, help and being there for one another and us as adults kind of stepping in and helping these children learn and grow emotionally as well is so important. So I'm so grateful for that and I'm grateful for that ref referendum money which gets us Mr. Davis uh, and also gets me another counselor. So um, thank you all for everything that you do for us in our department and I think I'll turn it over to Dr. Nance. So thank you again. Um, if I may, are there any questions for any members of the counseling team or Malachi, our student representative? And so again, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, I'm sorry, counselor. Sorry, yeah. Yes, please go ahead. So I'm I'm not sure how this happened, but um, you're going to do a kindness day activity. Is that right? Is that what you just said? Well, I did you know? Probably did. The National Random Acts of Kindness Day is. So there you go. Um, I don't know whether you ever heard the program called Kindness Rocks. Painted rocks, kind of like uh, the, the uh, painted uh, Little Free Libraries uh, are out there to be shared with people. 
the idea is you paint the rocks and you leave them in various places. And as people come across the rocks, of course, the ideal thing is take one and leave one kind of thing. But anyway, there you go. Are you giving those to me? That, that is yours. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why I brought it tonight, but. It was for me. It was for you, obviously. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I was just yes. going to say on behalf of the of the board, um, I, I think this is amazing. You've got a great team, and thank you for being so thorough and sharing what you're doing to address student mental health. And certainly in the news recently, we probably also need to focus on teachers' mental health. So um, I'm sure the district will be addressing that soon. But um, congratulations. And thank you so much again. You know, uh, we all know and, and we definitely appreciate our district. Our district is putting all of its resources and focus into making sure that our students are okay and that our employees are okay because we all know that if we're, if our hearts and minds are not okay, uh, then we can't learn, we can't teach. And so uh, again, thank you so much for showing the interest and in allowing us here at Crestwood Middle School to be able to show you how we are really working to strengthen the mental health and social emotional well-being of our children. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Tipsy Council. Thank you. thank you, Malachi Sanders. Yes, yes, Javier, please go ahead. My former Crestwood student. Yes. Yeah, so as I, I'm a former Crestwood student and just like, I don't know, as the thing was going on, I like honestly did get emotional because I was there when three, oh, four years ago and just how it's changed over the years and like how I've grown there as like why I came from a different, from elementary to middle, I came from a smaller school that didn't have the support for me with my learning disability. Um, so going to your school definitely helped me a lot more. Um, Mrs. Jolly was my, uh, the lady who obviously d works with the um, IEP ESD student. So it was definitely, a lot. it was, I can't, ex like, I don't know. I, it's, it was awesome. It, you guys really helped me grow and learn how to learn with my disability and everything. And then just hearing the peer mentoring. I remember when I was in school, there was many students who did that as well. Um, best buddies I'm in the club in um, high school right now so we just had our um, Valentine's Day social last week and just in bring it into the realm of middle schoolers is a lot better because as a high schooler I definitely struggled with being able to talk to certain people with disabilities and joining the club of best buddies definitely helped me grow because in the real world you need to know how to speak and talk and communicate with everyone so there's a lot of stuff that from the middle school um, from high school that I've seen is going down to the middle school that I really love it. Um, every time I flipped, every time you went through a new page on the slide, I just, so many memories and everything just hit me at once. Um, I was in band, we'll start with that also. I was, I was um, flute, so I was really enjoyed seeing that as well. And then just, I can't explain. Like everything, everything about how your school has grown. And one thing that you guys said, and I'm not trying to be like rude or anything, but like you said, everyone needs to hear what they heard. Like the thing of you saying students not being noticed, because not trying to be mean or anything, but like the bad students are the ones who get noticed and everything. But y'all bringing the attention to all types of students, which I was like, I feel like I was just like, an, I never was in trouble or anything. So. Um, but just bringing the attention to the students, all students in the population is great. The Father Day, my dad participated in every one of those. And then I just remember um, it was a Father's Day, but you guys had it the same day, as the same like week as the book fair. So my dad bought me everything. <laughs> bought me everything on that. So remember, you guys need to do that again on the book fair. And then, and then I have a, my nephew, he's... Um, on the spectrum, he has a autism spectrum disorder. So just seeing how the schools are evolving to help and suit everyone better is just, it's like, it's awesome. And then like you said, for the Best Buddies Club, like you said, in high school, it's more focused on, on like physical disabilities, like, and how the, in the, your, your middle school is bringing it to more of the, I guess, mental, like learning, like cognitive disabilities. I just, I don't know, I just, Y'all are doing great, honestly. Like, I just, I just love how to see how the school has grown from when I was there, and then just it's growing, it's doing great from when I was there. So I really appreciate thank you being that. And um, I'm an alumni eagle, and I love it. Okay. <laughs> awesome. I, I, I.
I, I can say it any better. He said it all. Once an eagle, always, always an eagle. eagle. Yep. And so just really quick, you know, we are truly committed, you know, um, Javier, um, we're, we are doing our best at Crestwood to listen, to be open, and to be actionable. Uh, if we say that we are committed to creating welcoming and inclusive environments, then we need to have the programs to support that. And we need to uh, help all of our students to understand that our goal is to help you to become the best possible you. And so that's what I said about uh, what I love about the middle school journey, because everybody's journey is different. However, you can still arrive at that same destination through your own journey. And so I will say to you that when I saw you up here on this board, I was a proud mom. I said, I remember that baby. And so I definitely will pass on those sentiments to the educators that you mentioned that you feel were so pivotal in helping you to grow and to become the young man that you're growing and becoming as well. And I want you to come back to Crestwood. So I'm gonna set that. Yeah, I want you to come back to Crestwood and talk to the kids. No? But it's male uh, caregivers, a, a male family figure members. in the that is correct. A male, think a male leadership figure in like obviously our community. Yeah, so I, I don't know. Maybe we'll reach out. We'll reach out. Thank you, Javier Javier Rives, J A V I E R. <laughs> awesome. Thank well, you. thank you so much for those those caring and fine words. And so, um, just a couple more slides, and we're gonna wrap it up. Um, again, we've talked a lot about uh, it takes a village. And so uh, if it were not for the support of our community and your belief in public schools, we would not continue to be, uh, to be able to provide those types of programs and services. And so of course, aesthetics, creating um, a learning environment that is clean and that is modern and that is beautiful is also very important. So here are just some photos of some of the recent um, upgrades that we've received at Crestwood. We've been painted, Javier. We have painting the brick. They cleaned the brick. Can you believe that? So here you see, uh, before you, you see uh, uh, our new doors. All of our classrooms are being painted inside and out. All of the brick is being restored and cleaned. Uh, you see the new lighting. Of, of our gymnasium, uh, new um, audio enhancement equipment, and we are so excited uh, to, as part of enhancing our school safety plan in the top right corner, uh, you see uh, how some of our brick has been painted. So uh, we have the yellow striped hallway, we have the red hallway, the green hallway, the orange hallway, and all of that was put in place again to enhance the safety plan uh, at Crestwood Middle School. And so Again, we want to say thank you uh, to all of you that voted uh, for those tax dollars. They are definitely uh, being put to good work um, and great use at Crestwood and throughout our district. So strong schools and strong communities. And so I just want to wrap up by saying, you know, about how beautiful uh, and powerful it is when we're all united. And we must be united in heart and mind because ultimately at the end of the day, these are all of our kids, uh, whether as North, as Jupiter, as West, as Belle Glade, as South, as Boca, uh, we are committed. We are committed to excellence, we are committed to growth, and we are committed to doing what is in the best interest of all children at Crestwood Middle School. And so I thank you tonight because that is who we are. We are Crestwood. Are there any questions? Any questions? Okay. I don't think so. Thank you. Thank so you very much. much. All right. Yes, we continue on our agenda. I think we have a report from the district. Good evening. Let me, uh, Get the presentation ready. Okay, good evening, Village of Royal Palm Beach. It's always a pleasure to be here to showcase some of the great work happening in our five schools here in the village that serve our students within the village. So um, this evening, I do want to thank uh, several of our visitors that are with us today, part of my team, which is um, Ms. Vivian Green, our Instructional Superintendent for Elementary Schools, as well as Karen Wetzel, our instructional superintendent for secondary schools. We have uh, all of our principals here from elementary, middle, and high this evening. So thank you for being here. Um, as you know, um, 
they do work very closely together. So I do want to send uh, great thoughts coming from Mr. Burke, Superintendent Burke, and also our Deputy Superintendent uh, Tierney, who um, I am representing this evening as well. And also, of course, Ms. Marcia Andrews, our school board member who is here, always supporting the village of Royal Palm. I also want to remind you in regards to our, um, our um, plan for the next, our strategic plan for the next five years. Our district is currently working on those action steps. They're almost ready to roll um, as to how we're going to be able to meet the demands of uh, each one of those initiatives and also uh, meet the objectives. So we always have, have to uh, remember that our priority outcomes always to educate, affirm, and inspire our students. So we're going to take a quick um, tour from our five schools in the village of Royal Palm, starting with Cypress Trails and, and Principal Salter, who is here with us this evening. We are super proud of our custodial team at Cypress Trails. And you know, oftentimes we don't recognize um, some of our unsung heroes. And I want to say that our custodial team is one of those teams that are those unsung heroes that work in the evenings um, and also during the daytime to ensure that our students have the very best learning environment. So our custodial team at Cypress Trails is one of the best around. They were recently named with one of uh, named one of the schools of the month in the district with an impressive cleanliness scores of 97% and 98% in the months of December and January. Most importantly, there are wonderful members of the Lion family and pour their love and energy into giving our students and staff the best facilities to learn. So a huge round of applause to our custodial team. Also, uh, are now um, celebrating our Lions, our students. They recently celebrated the school-wide medium progress towards annual growth, which is 77% in reading and 65% in math, and this is in iReady. iReady is uh, one of our digital softwares that's adaptive, so it is very impressive to have that type of annual growth. And the goal is about 50% for this time of year because we're about 50% done with the year. So over 180 students in the school reached their 50% goal in both subjects and had a blast enjoying a video game truck party. So you got to work hard, play hard. Moving over to H.L. Johnson with uh, Dr. Amado Kucharski as principal. They enjoyed the Literacy Week and um, HLJ took a dive into literacy. They decorated the center courtyard with students' work uh, to see, uh, so that they could seem as if they were under sea. So that was pretty cool. Mystery readers, they had five different teachers read a book while their face was a sea creature. And also they were uh, caught, get caught reading, and then slam family night, which was book fair, family board games, karaoke, bingo, large games, and shared the students' science fair boards, which is a great event. They also uh, participated in the Kids Mile at the South Florida Fair, um, keeping in mind about healthy bodies, healthy minds. The purpose of the running club is to prepare students for future running events, improve their stamina, while also building their confidence. And at the end of the six-week session, runners had the ability to complete a full marathon by running two miles per week. That's a lot, but that's great. You got to keep your mind healthy by keeping your body healthy. H.L. Johnson, looking forward to more learning and care for February. So this is really unique. I was um, looking at it and thought it was so creative. So the Raise Craze Acts of Kindness is a fundraiser, but what this fundraiser is all about is really an interactive approach for students to collect donations online via a secure Custom website then show their appreci appreciation by serving others and completing random acts of kindness. In other words, students spend time serving, not selling, which is very nice. And then also the get caught being kind as well as supporting grandma's place. Moving over to Royal Palm Beach L with Principal Getty. So Royal Palm Beach L. Bobcats created special piece quilts in January to honor the work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Also, uh, the Bobcats celebrated Literacy Week from January 23rd through the 27th 
with many special activities, including a bulletin board decorating contest, spirit days, and also reading picnics. They also celebrated Literacy Week by ending it with a wel uh, welcoming very special guests, readers onto the campus. Ms. Green was there from Central Region, as well as Mr. Hamara from the Village of Royal Palm Councilman. Chief Mooney from Chief of Police was there, Ms. Andrews, uh, representing District 6 School Board, Mr. Keith Oswald, which is the Chief of Equity and Wellness, was also there, as well as Charvel and Anna, and the Palm Beach Fire Rescue and Drowning Prevention. Mike Kennedy from the PBSO, McKinley Roll, the TOSA from Royal Palm Beach High School, and Jack McCarthy, which is a supervisor, one of the supervisors for the School District Police. So a lot of guest readers um, to continue serving our students. Well, tonight, Crestwood did an amazing job, and I want to give a round of applause and appreciation to Crestwood Middle School's administration. I absolutely love the focus of the arts that you brought in this evening, showcasing the fine arts, not only with art, but also music. Uh, love the fact that we really spent a lot of time to, to um, learn about all of the work that our school counselors are doing in our school, especially in the time you know, that we're in that we know that many of our students need that work with um, social learning and uh, emotional help. So thank you for that. And it was a very thorough presentation. So this will go fairly quickly because I see that everything was showcased tonight, but I'm so it, it, much better if it comes from you than from me. So, um, but I do wanna, it, w this was not part of it, but so we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and, and, and um, celebrate our National School Counseling Week which uh, was last week, February 6th to the 10th. And then uh, you met them this evening, the wonderful team, um, when they had their appreciation breakfast, and then the counseling team enjoying a moment during the chat and chew, which you heard about this evening, which I think is I think it's wonderful. It's a great idea. And then this is the next uh, picture that shows uh, our counseling team with a chat and chew um, time with their kids. I think it's fabulous. What a great, great team of counselors, school counselors. So congratulations for that. Great hiring. All right, so uh, also Crestwood's Peace and Love Dance. Um, on this past Friday, over 300 students soared into the beautifully decorated cafeteria for the Peace and Love Dance. Students enjoyed listening and dancing to their favorite music, good and fun. Before I move on to Royal Palm Beach High School, though, I want to remind us about our conversations last year talking about how can we help Crestwood um, be that middle school that glue between the elementary schools and Royal Palm Beach High School that will actually take Crestwood to the next level instead of being just a community school and I think that they have absolutely uh, done that by bringing the pre-A's and uh, we're very very excited about the work that's happening at Crestwood and the fact that they're housing right now next door uh, the, uh, the temporary school site, Malaluka, and then soon to be Wimbrook um, in about a year and a half, and I'll get into that shortly. Um, what a great opportunity to really showcase the work that they've been doing. I know that Dr. Nance has been working very closely with Dr. Maupin, the principal from Malaluka, and they've been working on some projects together, um, which is fabulous, because what that's doing is that it's exciting the fifth graders to want to stay at Crestwood and actually come through choice programming and really increase uh, by bringing some of those really, really high achieving students as well to come from outside of the uh, boundary area into these choice programs. So I think it's a great opportunity. It's a really a win-win. So I'm very, very happy with the progress of Crestwood Middle and moving in uh, the direction that will really prepare students to be ready for Royal Palm Beach High School. So thank you for that. Thank you for your vision and for moving forward with that work. And now moving uh, over to Royal Palm Beach High School. So this is the pinnacle of, uh, this is the graduation, right? This is the race to graduation with only four years. So I wanna highlight a few uh, great activities that are happening, highlights at Royal Palm Beach High School. 37 of the Royal Palm Beach High School, um, uh, the health occupation specialists, it's, a, it's basically a student's um, group that is through their choice programming. They competed in the Treasure Coast Regional Conference and did an amazing job representing Royal Palm Beach High School. 11 placed in the top three, 
and will be moving on to the state conference in April. So congratulations to those students. Also, Royal Palm Beach High School, talk about the arts. I mean, you've got some artistic folks out here. So uh, Royal Palm Beach came in second place in the South Florida Fair Art Project with Dino Mite Cutout. And Lola the T-Rex is on display in the Media Center at the entrance of the testing room. And a big thank you on behalf of the National Art Honor Society to those who went out to the fair and voted. And if you can see over to the left, the high schools, uh, very proud to say Lake Worth High School, which is another central region school, uh, earned that first place. And then second place, Royal Palm Beach High School uh, came in with their second place. So I'm very proud of their work. Also, congratulations to Olivia Kentro, Sophia Gamblin, and Mayala Neptune de Graff for qualifying for regionals. These young ladies put a lot of hard work this season to put themselves in a position to compete at regionals. So congratulations. Now this year, or this time last school year, I brought some data in, right? Now we're gonna go, we're gonna dive a little bit into data. Because you know, we gotta do a mid-year check. But it looks a little bit different than it has in the past. I'm gonna take just a, a moment to explain to you what these reports look like. Because remember, the state changed in the way that we're assessing students. The state is now assessing the students three times a year with a progress monitoring one to be able to collect the baseline of how the students are entering any particular grade level. Then mid-year, which I'm gonna show you the difference between the baseline and where the students are mid-year, which is PM2. And then at the end of the year, that's when they take their last assessment, and it's an end-of-year assessment. But what's important to note is that the assessment that the students are taking from the, from the test, it's actually an end-of-year assessment that they're taking as a baseline, as the mid-check, and at the end. So we're going to see a lot of red because at the beginning of the year, the kids haven't been taught yet. So what you want to see is a decline in the red and an increase in the blues and somewhere in the range in the middle. So I just uh, clicked over to the first slide that I want to explain to you. So you're looking at progress monitoring two, and this is overall ELA performance grades three through five. And what I did was I included only your three elementary schools in the village of Royal Palm. So these are just the three schools from the village of Royal Palm. On the left side, see where it says school overall? I put a little red box around it. So look at the difference between PM1 to the left and PM2 to the right. So notice how the level one is decreasing. And notice how, go all the way up to the top, the dark blue, the light blue, and the green, which denotes proficiency and higher, is getting larger. That's what you want to see. I also wanted to compare the Village of Royal Palm Beach Elementary School versus the district. So if you look towards the right, the other red box, I have included what the district looks like out of all the elementary schools in the district. And notice how the Village of Royal Palm Beach schools outperform the district. So I just wanted you to see, and that's, that's how you read these charts. And then it's broken down by gender, free and reduced lunch, English language learners, ESC, and so, and so forth. Any questions in regards to how to read the chart? Because I'm going to move on to the next set. So this is reading only. The next slide is math. Now math, you know, is concrete sequential. So in math, if you haven't been taught the math for the grade level, you really don't know the work, right? In reading, you can kind of get the gist of it. You can answer some questions and do better. But math, it really is concrete sequential. So you'll notice from PM1 to PM2, look at that, that nice big decline of 22%. And you notice how the green and even the, the yellow is starting to get a little bit wider. And then look at over at the district side on the right side, the comparison between your three Village of Royal Palm Beach schools and the district and how much better they performed even in PM1. That means that the students are coming well prepared for the next grade level. Moving on to mid-year overall science performance in grade five. 
Now this is different. This is not the same the same rules as that I explained to you before. This is our own winter diagnostic, which we have done every year. And this one is um, actually sharing what the prediction is of the percentage of students that if we continue teaching in the, in the same way that we're teaching for the year, then by the end of the year, they are, um, it's predicted that they're going to be proficient. So this is not the same as what I explained to you for PM1, 2, and 3. This is just a true mid-year check for a test that, they, that, that provides as a prediction. So if you look on the left, the school overall, you see the 31% in the red, and you see the green and the blue, the light blue and the blue, That's again, that's level 1, 2, 3, 4. You want to stick with the level 3, 4, and 5, and that's proficiency. Level 2 are those students that can go either way. And level one are the students that um, still need some catching up to do. And then you look it over towards the district overall. And if you look at the district overall, um, the our village of, of Royal Palm Beach are doing slightly better. But it looks pretty similar than the district. Any questions in regards to this science assessment and the prediction? Okay. So now moving on to middle school and high school. So you only have two schools that are reflective here, uh, Crestwood Middle and Royal Palm Beach High School. So if you look at the reading performance for grades 6 through 10, if you look at PM1 and PM2, the difference between the two, and then how the district performed. So it, it is, they are similar to the district. The next one is math. Again, I explained to you the math is very concrete sequential. We should be able to see a, a, a big decrease in the red because we are halfway through the material. And again, if you look at those two schools, they perform similar, slightly better, between PM1 and PM2 for uh, math, 6th through 10th grade. And then civics, very much like science. This is the winter diagnostics. And uh, civics, we've always done very well. But you can tell that, yeah, that we're continuing to do very well in civics. And then in science, it's always a work in progress. But you can see that in science for eighth grade, the students in, the, in uh, Crestwood Middle School outperform the district. Any questions in regards to the data? We're moving in the right direction, but I also want to note that we still have a lot of work to do. And we know. We're working on it. One bite at a time. So the next slide is, um, again, it's, it's an update in regards to the uh, temporary site that um, has been temporarily built next to Crestwood Middle School. And so I do have an update this evening that uh, Malaluka is um, going to overstay their welcome a little bit. So they're not able to finish the new Malaluka at the end of this year due to, again, supply and demand. I mean, the work, the work crews are doing the best that they can. The construction company doing the very best that they can to finish Malaluka so the students from Malaluka can go back to their uh, facility, to their new state-of-the-art, new and improved facility. In the meantime, remember that we have Win uh, Winbrook that's coming right behind them. So we just now um, shared this information with the uh, parents and staff of Malaluka this past Friday. I wanted to make sure that I share that information with you too, that we're looking at another half a year for Malaluka to stay about, and then Wimbrook would move in mid-year. And then they will stay for another year. So the two-year project, we're looking at now possibly a three-year project. The good news is, because, you know, I'm going to have to come up with some good news. The good news is that it really, for what, what, what we've been told, what we have experienced, it hasn't been that intrusive, um, you know, in, in, in your village, that, you know, we've been pretty good um, 
guess <laughs> for, for what I hear. Um, of course, you know, that can slightly change when another new set of parents come through. But that is something that the same way that we work through this with Malaluca, we are confident that we're going to be able to have a smooth transition with Winbrook. But it is a half a year delay. And I want to thank you for the overstay. And thank you to Crestwood because you guys have been so wonderful. So wonderful. Any questions uh, for me? Can I ask I a question about the, I'll, let me just ask the question about the transition. Yes. Would you do that during like uh, uh, Christmas break? Yes. Okay. It would be during that two week of winter break. Okay. And it will be very smooth. Like right now, uh, because Winbrook is, is a little bit bigger in student population than Malaluca, they're already installing the couple of more concretables as needed to house the next school. So that construction is happening now while uh, Malaluca is still there so that it's not obvious or, you know what I mean, so that they're ready for when it's time to shift. They're going to be shifting the students as soon as possible with the understanding that the students from Wimbrook are going to need enough time to be able to move into the temporary site at Crestwood. And we'll need time to change the sign from Maluka to Wimbrook. The least of the challenges. Okay. So, and I did have a, a comment that, uh, first of all, that it has worked out reasonably well, as far as I can mm -hmm. tell. I've not heard any, any complaints. Um, we did at the very beginning, but that was a lot of learning curve kind of kind of Growing things going things. on for everybody. Yeah. Uh, now that um, the school has been such a good host and attentive to the needs of the neighbors and the traffic in Royal Palm Beach, I do appreciate that. That's a, a good example of what all of us working together can, can make happen. Um, you know, we did some work uh, with H.L. Johnson on, on some issues of traffic. I wish there were some other things we could talk about other than traffic, but um, that does seem to be one of the challenges certainly for the school individually, mm -hmm. uh, drop off, pick up, and, uh, and the impact on traffic in general. So I think these are good examples of, you know, how we can work really effectively together and look at the results, uh, even the additional year. So um, I don't know what you're talking about as far as any kind of delays. Let me see. We were supposed to open up the new uh, Village Hall first of April. Mm -hmm. I, I knew that was an April Fool's joke, by the way. Uh, now June. So you. And, and June is in quotes as uh, we expect mm -hmm. that to be the bottom line is yeah this is a tough time to do construction it really is we understand that lack of cement is what we're being told yeah and Part and there are cement. there are those shortages clear yeah. uh, but it, but again working together yes. and, and keeping each other informed uh, and working through problems together i think uh, right. we've seen some pretty remarkable results and we want to hold those up as examples of what we can do so thank you for that no thank you <clears throat> any other questions for me Okay, Ms. Andrews. Thank you. Good evening to the Royal Palm Beach Educational Advisory Board, uh, Chair Sullivan, Vice Chair Crosby, uh, Mr. Hamera, Councilman Hamera, Javier, our student, just everybody up here. On the board, you're awesome. Our administrator, thank you for everything you do. It brings me a pleasure to bring greetings from our superintendent, Superintendent Michael Burt, and the entire team at the school board. What a beautiful night it has been. Crestwood Middle School eagers, you soar. You soar very high. What a wonderful time. When we think about uh, the arts, it was beautiful. I've been in your classroom so many times to hear the band to see those children doing the practice on their own time, it just means so much. I went out to take the picture to send it to the superintendent to let him know Crestwood Eagles soar. When we think about arts and academics, putting the two together, it's just so outstanding for our children. So we here in the village of Royal Palm Beach, we have great schools. I just want to say I had a wonderful time at Royal Palm Beach Elementary School for Literacy and Reading to the Children. And Crestwood, I was over there for Career Day. I didn't see it up there, but I was over there. And we made it happen for Career Day. 
you just do so many great things. We couldn't put it all on there, but guess what? It's happening here in the village of Royal Palm Beach with our outstanding uh, schools. And for all the principals who are here tonight, the district team, I commend you for the work you do because it starts in the school center. It starts in the classroom. It starts in the school. The district staff, thank you so much for everything that you do. So just a quick uh, updates from the school district. I just want to tell you safety and mental health. We heard about it tonight at Crestwood. I was pretty impressed being a former middle school principal. I was very impressed with Crestwood and the kinds of things we're doing in mental health, emotional well-being. Safety for our children is number one. We saw the chief of police reading with us over at um, Royal Palm Beach Elementary School, and she said, I want to come. I want to come to the Education Advisory Board to tell you about what it's all about as we keep our children safe in our schools. And the school board just received a review from the chief of police about how well our schools are safe. And so she said, let her know. She'll come here and she'll tell you all the things she's told the school board and the other parts of the community. Maybe you didn't hear it, but she wants to do it again for you. Safety and mental health, along with academics, all tie in together. If we lose one of those pieces, then we lose our children. So when I heard Javier talk about what it meant to him to be at Crestwood and how it helped him to be the person he is today, it just made my heart uh, flutter. So thank you so much for what you do in the schools because it touches our children. And when we hear our children talk about it, Javier, that's what validates what's truly happening within the school district. So safety and mental health, maybe we'll bring them here if you would like before the end of the year to hear that presentation uh, from our school district on, from the chief of police as well as from our safety leaders. I think that would be very world, w worth your while. We heard a, a piece of it tonight. We're working right now on our legislative uh, priorities with the school district of Palm Beach County and maybe that might be something you'd like for me to have sent to the administration here so that you can see the legislative priorities the school board uh, will be uh, actually delivering to Tallahassee when we all uh, meet on Palm Beach County Day. I'll see some of the elected officials from the village of Royal Palm Beach and maybe even some of you on Palm Beach County Day. But we try to get to Tallahassee sometimes one, two, or three times a year to speak before the committees to talk about our priorities, which are very, very important to our children and to our schools. We've already met with our legislative delegation from Palm Beach County, and we've gone over our priorities with them. They are awesome. We've elected them, and I can tell you, they represent us well. So I feel really good about our priorities as we move forth to this uh, session, which will begin in March. So we're ready, but we'd like for you to know what we're actually talking about when we go to Tallahassee and what we're lobbying for and asking for, for our schools and our children. And the last thing I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, would be the boundaries. We're not impacted here in the village of Royal Palm Beach. We've been pretty busy with boundaries lately. We have a brand new school opening, uh, uh, the Garcia High School, Joaquin Garcia High School, right there in West Lake Worth at uh, Lantana, Lake Worth Road in Lyons. Beautiful school. But when you talk about boundaries and when you have to make a change, we all love our homes. We love our schools. It's where we live and where we belong. We've been there sometimes with the same children from elementary, middle school, high. And when we get a new school, and this is the first high school we've built in almost 10 years, maybe a little bit more than 10 years, and it's impacting pretty close to seven or eight schools that will feed into the Dr. Joaquin Garcia High School. So it's been very emotional. People are very concerned. We've been good listeners here at the School Board of Palm Beach County. We have a boundary committee that actually listens to everyone and makes a recommendation to the superintendent who actually makes a, rep a, a recommendation to the school board. So we're not at the end yet. We're still listening. Uh, the committee has listened for hours and hours and hours, and I've been on all those listening uh, tours for hours and hours because every parent's voice is important. But we're not involved in that, but I just want you to know what's going on. You're going to hear a little bit more about it on the uh, Wednesday board meeting, and we'll probably be in for long listening again because it's important to listen to everybody's concerns because their children mean everything to them. So we're not going to be impacted by this, but 
just a little uh, tidbit for District 6. Uh, we do have a middle school that's opening a little bit to the east, but not here in District 6. But we will be busy within the next few years because we will be opening a brand new high school off of North Lake, uh, really back in the acreage area because it will relieve a lot of the crowding that we have in District 6. We're opening up a new elementary school in Arden that's coming in the next few years. And then we'll probably get another elementary school in Westlake. So we've got a lot of work coming here, but it won't be as, uh, I guess, what would I say, as complicated and as emotional as what we're dealing with now because you're actually impacting a lot of schools from the east. You're John I. Leonard of the World, Forest Hill High School, Wellington High School, Palm Beach Central High School, Santa Lucia's High School, Park Vista High School, Olympic Heights High School. So when you start naming them all and you're taking little pieces of it to put together for the new uh, Dr. Joaquin Garcia High School, everybody is looking at how it will impact them. And we want it to be a smooth opening for the beautiful Dr. Joaquin Garcia High School, which is great. But when you are talking to parents and talking to students, because they've been to the board meetings too, and they've been on the line saying, how will this impact my life? If I'm a rising junior and I could be disconnected from being able to stay at my school that I've worked so hard for for the last two years, how will you help me? The recommendation from the committee is to allow the rising juniors to stay. It's always been that we allow the seniors to stay, but that's out there as a possibility for the school board to approve. And then there are a few other things that as we listen and we continue to listen, we won't make everybody happy, but we truly want to respect everybody's opinion and try to take care of everybody's child because all children are different and all of them come from different places where they are in their educational arena. And so we're working at it, so you'll probably see me talking about it and working closely with everyone, but we aren't impacted by that, but that's a big deal of time that we're working on over the next few weeks and maybe a month. Hopefully uh, we're gonna have that school open and ready to go and everybody pretty much will be happy in August and those that may not be as happy as we want them to be, we're going to try to work with them individually to see what we can do to make them feel better about going to that great school. It's awesome. If you get a chance to pass down Lyons between Lake Worth and Lantana, it's magnificent. But it's a personal thing, too. So you have to look at the whole picture. So that's what we're doing right now, working with the legislature, trying to keep the students safe, working on boundaries, and asking you to continue to support us, as you've always done with the referendum and supporting the school district of Palm Beach County in the way you've always done, it makes us great because we know we could not do it without you. So this educational advisory board has been very powerful in helping the school district move forward in a great direction. We are an A-rated school and we wanna to continue to be an A-rated school district. Questions? Thank you, Ms. Andrews. Um, I would love to have the um, school district police uh, Chief, thank you. Chief um, Mooney, mm -hmm. uh, visit our our board. So perhaps we can schedule that. Oh, in May. Oh, good. We're already ahead of the game. Okay, okay. Wonderful. great, so great. We'll look, Fabulous. Looking forward and, to that. And maybe can I add a little bit of piece of mental health to come with her, because I think they they go hand in hand. <clears throat> it's important to know that we're safe, and that we have our police officers in place and and mechanisms to keep our buildings safe. But it also is the emotional piece that you heard today from Crestwood. So if we can kind of combine that, I'll work with you to see if we can get someone to put it together so it could be com a combination of both because it takes both to make sure that we're really safe and that we're doing what we can do our best job for children to be successful. Good. Well, I'm looking forward to that. I also wanted to mention that um, I'm going, I will be up in Tallahassee for Palm Beach County Days. Okay. So I, are you going as well, Commissioner? Okay. I'll, um, I'll be advocating on behalf of the state arts and culture grants that that need funding every year and support the artists and the arts organizations that serve a lot of the schools so I that funding is, is important but I would love to see the priorities so that I'm educated and can speak on your behalf as well and we'll make sure we get them to you ASAP okay uh, that's the dates are March 7th and 8th yes so mm -hmm. I'll coming see up, you there coming up quick <laughs> 
other questions? That's a, that's an excellent idea because, as you know, wandering around, okay, absolutely. it's always good to have uh, a consistent uh, theme going for mm -hmm. the things that we're most interested in, clearly, in our own individual areas, but also to be able to help out with the schools, which cuts across mm -hmm. all of our interests in the communities. Um, I so appreciate what you do because Thank you keep you. us all informed. Uh, and for what you do as part of a board that struggles with a lot of tough issues. Yes. Uh, and I spent two years on the uh, ABC. Oh, yes. And as simple as ABC is, what they do is anything but simple. Uh, and I can only begin to imagine the challenges uh, that um, that they are having right now. And I so respect them for, for the, the approach that they take, which is what you just said. And that is you listen. Mm -hmm. And then you listen. And then you, you listen. listen. Interestingly enough, you do that enough, you can come up with an idea that maybe you hadn't had before. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, you set a great example. Absolutely. You really do, and I appreciate that. I appreciate the board and yeah. my former colleagues on ABC. Yes, so. and being respectful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Andrews. Okay. a few more agenda items we'll try to wrap this up quickly um, I believe that it's my turn the chairs initiative which I'm just going to say that um, the village of Royal Palm Beach scholarship program the applications are closed now so we're excited about reviewing those applications that is what this committee uh, really does and does well so um, I believe we're interviewing students April 1st Great. So, and then we will be, uh, they'll be announced and awarded at the Village Council meeting on May 18th. So, um, can't believe that graduation is coming up so quickly. So, that was just my reminder. And then uh, Javier kind of brings us home with your student council report. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Javier Rivas, um, student body president at Royal Palm Beach Community High School. And this is my report. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, one more thing about Crestwood before I start talking about the great things at Royal Palm. Um, the pre-ACE program is such a great idea. When I came to high school, Royal Palm, I think they just started with the ACE program, so not a lot of students knew about it. So once I got into it, it was late in my high school year to receive the ACE diploma. So having the students know about this before they go in, even into high school, like, I was like, they need it. Like, it's great that, like, now at Royal Palm, they're, like, like saying a lot about it during your freshman year, but now that you're saying even before, um, it really helps because the ACE diploma is Bright Futures, and Bright Futures is a lot of easy work for a lot, like makes everyone's life a lot easier. So that's, I really love that, that y'all are doing that. Um, so the Royal Palm Beach Community High School's um, student government went to Big Dog Ranch Rescue out in Loxahatchee. We, it was awesome. We were able to play with dogs, learn about like where they came from, um, basically just help around there, and we all really enjoyed that. It was not only um, helping the community, but helping us because dogs, mental health, like they all just come together and just there was so much happiness and just everyone loved it. Like there were some students that were like just sitting there with the dogs for like 20 minutes on end. And I was just like, what are they doing? But they were just enjoying it and just taking it in because, I don't know, dogs make me happy. So they made, it, they made everyone else there happy as well. We had the District 5 meeting. We are the... There are six districts in the county, in, in Florida, for the Florida Association of Student Councils. District, District 5 is the one that Royal Palm Beach Community High School falls into. Um, so our, we have, right now, we are the president of the district, but, okay, wait. For the 2022-2023, we were the president of the district. Now for the 2022-2024, we ran for vice president, and we ended up winning, so... Congratulations to Riley Manuel and Sydney Greenway Matthew. Um, so Royal Palm allows us to like keep our foot in the door of the government as well um, for student council. So that's a really great opportunity for us to be able to keep our spot on the executive board of District Five. Uh, we are also doing a food bank, a food drive, which started last Friday and then it was going on to it goes till this Wednesday. Me and my friend Raina, which is also, she's a senior class president. We sit outside the media center for the all lunches and we receive the, we receive cans from a bunch of students around the school. Like we were there Friday and we didn't get anything because it's our first day. So it was a great, like I made sure to start the week before so students knew for the next week that they had to bring stuff in 
Like, people were like, you guys don't have anything. I was like, you guys should bring something. Come on. <laughs> so we, we received a lot of that. I think we received maybe over 30 cans, and it's only the first day. So we're grateful for that. Do you think FASC? So FASC is our F Florida Association of Student Council. Like, again, we have our big conference in Coral Springs. It's in this year. It's in Coral Springs. So we will have that meeting from the 17th to the 19th. So we're very excited for that. It allows us to grow with leadership. There's a lot of different speakers there and as well as um, vote on different, um, I don't, I, I'm pretty sure there are laws that will be passed on into the higher government of the state of Florida from all the districts of um, the Florida Association of Student Council. There's also Black History Month, so our BSU, Black Student Union, has started a, they had Black History m like Month, like Spirit Week, so it's each each week they have a different thing going on. So last week it was actually Natural Hair Day, and then I have curly hair, but it does not always look like this. So I decided to comb it out, and my hair was literally this big, and it was awesome. So if you go to the Black Student Union on Royal Palm, you guys could see a photo of me with my hair looking <laughs> natural because. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> um, we also created a. Once you go into our school, it's in the front office, main office area. We've made a billboard, and it has a quote of Martin Luther King and a photo of him that one of our um, student council members, Andrew. So we appreciate her for that. And then we also have a social um, student council social coming up this Wednesday because, like, I'm not trying to like say anything, but student council we do a lot of work in school. Like, I don't. It's we we really do a lot of work. We do. So it's great to have a day for us to just like calm down and relax, especially in like a time where we have our big conference coming up this weekend, just like to have a time to relax because we need it. And I'm just saying, cause I'm also like, I'm in student government, so I know how it is. And we, like I said, one more time, we do a lot of work throughout the school. So, um, let me see. And then we also have spirit week going on right now for Valentine's day. So the first day was Cupid's crush so dress as your Valentine. So there was many people dressing as their Valentine's for that. And our lunch game was jump roping. You don't understand. Like there were so many kids like jump roping. We were like, we were just setting up days and then, there were so many kids jump roping, <laughs> and we did it so it was like um, the big jump rope and most of people were able to jump in. It was just so nice to see everyone um, there just hanging out with each other and just being a community. Um, tomorrow is night in, night out, so you could dress up fancy or dress down. For, personally, for me, I'm gonna, I have a jacket I wore to home no, prom last year, and those jackets are expensive, so I need to use it as much as I can, so I am going to be dressed... <laughs> So I'll be, I'll definitely be dressing up tomorrow, um, and then I'm pretty sure. Oh, I have the lunch activity actually right here. Our lunch activity is going to be musical chairs. Everyone loves musical chairs. Um, next day is Wednesdays. On Wednesdays we wear pink, so everyone's going to be wearing pink on that for Valentine's Day. And our lunch activity will be, be guest a romantic comedy movie. So we'll have like, thing to flip it up and we'll guess. And the last day is Thursday. If I have the lunch activity, it's how well do you know your Valentine? So we'll be able to see how everyone, how well everyone knows their Valentine. Um, that's basically all I have for student. Oh, I don't know if this came up, but like I said, I'm really great friends with the DECA president. She's literally my neighbor. Um, so she, we always like keep each other in time. Um, I don't, because the meetings, we skipped the meeting in January. So I don't think you guys know about this. So after they had their competition in Kaiser University, they had 25, oh, sorry, 15 students go on to states, and then half of the students place in the top three. So that's really great on their part. Yeah, and that's a lot more like throughout the years, like the program, the DECA marketing program growing up, growing as well. Um, and that's all I have. I yield the floor. Is there any questions? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. have one more thing. Um, Mrs. Andrews, so I actually got in, emailed, we were very busy, so I wasn't able to email you at the beginning of January, but I ended up emailing you guys towards, like right now, uh, Mrs. Miss Santa Cruz got back to me and she gave me some dates, so I will talk to the, I, I said in the email, I was like, could you please hold the 22nd for me, but I have to talk to the administrators at my school. I was like, I literally said, I will let you know tomorrow morning, so. Um, so, because I hear how you were able to go to all the different schools around the village and then you didn't say Royal Palm, so hopefully 
you'll have the opportunity to come and visit Royal Palm on February 22nd. Um, I yield the floor now. Now I yield the floor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, any statements from the public? Has anyone had not talked yet? <laughs> okay. Um, and then I just need to get a motion to approve the minutes from the last board meeting, uh, two board meetings, November 14th and December 12th. Can I have a motion? Thank you. A second? Okay, all in favor? All right, minutes are approved. All right, I'm going to hit this gavel, and we are adjourned. Thank you.